Hope. What do you hope for for 2021? We all tend to have some hopes and today at the start of this new year, maybe you're hoping that 2021 will be better than 2020. Maybe you're hoping you don't have to go to, back to school or even to work. Hoping that you don't get COVID. Hoping you can pay your bills at the end of the month. Hoping to go on holiday later this year. We could also talk about things even further ahead, maybe in the future. I want to, I hope to change my job. I hope my kids turn out okay. Uh, you know, we, we use hope in this way of expressing a desire, really, a desire for the future. And sometimes our hopes are realistic and quite possible, sometimes unlikely, but we still have the hope that they could happen. So they're within the realms of possibility. But there's always that level of uncertainty, isn't there? There's a bit of doubt. The standard dictionary definition is to feel that something desired may happen. And those two words, feel and may, already indicate to us that there's uncertainty. So hope, in a sense, is a kind of uncertain optimism. Something that we, we want to happen, we'd really like to happen, we believe it might happen, but we don't actually know that it will. So we keep our fingers crossed, hoping that everything will go okay and be like we want it to be. But the reality is often life doesn't turn out that way, the way we hoped. Hopes can easily be dashed, even die. People let us down, we let ourselves down, life lets us down. And our hope can quickly be replaced by feelings of discouragement and doubt hopelessness and even helplessness. Often those who give up on life are those who have no longer got hope. The Bible though uses hope in a very different way. The kind of hope that appears in our motto text for 2021, Lamentations 3.25, which says, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. In fact, the biblical word for hope is so different that some people who have translated this um, into English have done, done it differently. They've changed the word for hope, which is in Hebrew, to a kind of an interpretation of it. Wait on, depend on, rely on, trust in, those kind of meanings. Because the biblical definition of hope doesn't, isn't related to what we desire or wish to happen in the future. It's not about unrealistic optimism. The original Hebrew word, in fact, is a word that's linked to the word rope, believe it or not, hope, rope. That word originally carried this sense of being twisted and bound together to like cords to make something strong and enduring. And the Bible itself says a, a strand of three cords is not easily broken. As you can see from uh, the picture of this rope, that it has different elements to it bound and twisted together, which make it stronger than ever. It's already strong on its own, but made into one piece, but with many strands, makes it incredibly enduring and strong and reliable and could be used for all kinds of things, for towing a boat, for towing a car uh, or lifting up our weight if we need to be lifted up, all kinds of things. When someone is drowning or somebody is in trouble, someone is in a, in a, in a hole in the ground, you know, what's, what's it, what is it that people always think, you know, what should we do? Throw them a rope. I mean, imagine yourself in any of those scenarios. You, you, you've, you've broken through some ice on a, a river and fallen into the water. You're in a, in a, in a pit. You're, you're in need of escape. You're in need of help. You're in need of rescue. And suddenly a, a rope appears. Someone's thrown you a rope. And you grab hold of that rope and you feel at the end of the, the, the rope there is someone to pull you up and pull you out. You're, you're, at that moment, you'll have hope. Maybe you're in a situation where no one has come and nothing's happened and you've lost hope. And then suddenly that rope appears and you grab hold of it and suddenly you have hope. Hope on a rope. A bit like what happened in this uh, true account, which only happened uh, a few months back. A woman teetering on a ledge outside her 16th floor apartment, gasping for air in a cloud of smoke pouring out of her building. A firefighter risking his own life to save hers. News for us, Mark Santia is live in Harlem with the must-see video. And what that brave firefighter had to say, Mark. Chuck, just incredible. The woman's doing okay. She's safe after being rescued more than 160 feet off the ground. 16 stories above the ground, a woman holds on for her life. Smoke and flames cutting off her escape route, 
You can see her clutching onto the bricks as FDNY firefighters arrive. Firefighter Brian Quinn tries to ease the woman's fears. I basically just stayed at the window and tried to calm her down and tell her not to jump, that we were going to come get her. Quinn's FDNY partners worked to knock down the flames inside the apartment. We heard her screaming and just the glass falling. We didn't and, know what was going on. And our neighbors were on. screaming. Neighbors watch in horror, fearing the worst. I'm just so grateful for the courage and the, um, the people that serve the people each day. The woman takes a few steps away from the window, unnerving people on the ground who are watching the rescue unfold. Oh, man, she's walking on the thin edge outside the window. 16 stories oh, up, God. the rescue team secures firefighter Quinn and the team begins a roof rope rescue. Quinn rappels down from the 17th floor, putting the woman in a bear hug. When I got down there, I just tried to grab her, but I realized she had a really tight grip onto the windowsill. She didn't want to go anywhere. After about three minutes, the fire is out. The smoke dies down. The woman is safely brought inside. Residents and bystanders applauding the efforts of the FDNY. Commissioner Nigro also applauding the work of his firefighters. They did what had to be done bravely. The FDNY practices that type of roof rope rescue frequently. The last time they needed to use it was 2016, and then it was again this afternoon. We're live in Harlem. I'm Mark Santia, News 4 New York. So earlier, the woman may have got to that point where she lost hope, where she was just, and the, and the firemen were worried, I think, that she had got to that point and that she would, she would fall, she would jump to her death. And so not having much time, they, they grabbed a rope, not being able to use other methods which are more secure, they grabbed a rope and they did this rope rescue. And not only did, um, did the rope bring that woman hope, but the fireman coming down, uh, lowering himself, or his friend lowering him down, uh, meant that she, she would have had hope as she saw them. And then that led to her being saved. Well, God has thrown us a rope. In fact, God not only has thrown us a rope, but God has come down like the fireman did to save us. That's what we've been remembering over this Christmas period in our series, over Christmas throughout December, in fact. Hope has a name. Hope has a name. That's what we've been talking about. Jesus. God in Jesus has performed a rope-type rescue. Jesus came to save us. God has provided us with salvation. He secured that salvation through Jesus, his cross, and his resurrection. One of our previous sermons was called Seeking Hope. Regarding the wise men, and how they travelled great distances to find Jesus. We also saw how the shepherds, on receiving the news of Jesus, went to Bethlehem to seek and find the baby that they'd been told about. And that's what Lamentations 3, 21, 25 says we should be doing, isn't it? Seeking him. On hearing about Jesus and his rescue, that rescue is available through him, we can seek him. I don't know if you've noticed that in caves, if you've visited caves ever, um, now obviously they're all lit up so that people can go through them safely and you might have a light on your helmet, but there's always a rope that goes along um, from the entrance to where, as far as the public are allowed to go, at wa waist height. And what's that rope there for? Why, why is it there? Well, it's there in case the lights go out. But you know the rope's there, the staff know the rope's there. So even in the pitch black and the uncertainty of how you're going to get out, you know there's a rope there. You seek out that rope, you find that rope, and once you get that rope and hold on to that rope, you, you, you don't let it go, and you follow that rope all the way out of the cave to safety. God has provided us with the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, and all we have to do is seek him, and he promises we can find him. And having sought him and found him, then it says in this verse that we're to hope in him. And that word, their hope, as, as I said earlier, some translators have translated it differently to trust in, depend on, rely on, wait on God. So we rely on God. We, we trust in his promises. We trust that this promise of salvation through grace, through faith alone in Christ alone, we can be saved. And the biblical hope that we're talking about this is a living hope because it's in Jesus Christ who is alive, who, who rose again so that we can live eternally with him. 
so that we can have eternal life, so that we can have future. So our hope is a future hope. We, we through Jesus Christ, through trusting him, we can have hope for the future, that the consequences of our sin, the separation that exists between us and God because of our sin, doesn't have to be permanent. It can be removed now so that we immediately are in a position of being saved, but it means that one day we can be with him forever in heaven. So this living hope, this true hope, this eternal hope, this future hope is found in Jesus. And it's a hope that's sure and certain because of what what Jesus has done. He, he died on the cross, but he also rose again, proving that the promises of God are true. So God promises that if we trust in Jesus Christ, if we call on the name of Jesus, we will be saved. And Jesus proves that it's reliable and true, that we can hold on to it firmly like a strong rope, because he rose from the grave. And so our hope is is secure our hope is sure now the bible tells us also that he's coming back he came once uh, to save uh, like that fireman came down to save us provided salvation um, and the possibility of being saved although like i said the fulfillment of our salvation is future is heaven but he's coming back so whether we die or he returns either way he, he's going to bring in salvation for us future salvation so our, so our hope is for the future. Our hope is in what is to come. As they say, the best is definitely yet to come. However, we're talking about hope, living hope. So we're talking about hope for today as well. Hope isn't just about the world to come, but living hope is about the world we're in, having hope now. And if you've trusted in Jesus for salvation, then you know heaven is your home and you look forward to it. But we're not home yet. Uh, yeah, hoping in God means we look forward to a perfect world and a perfect future. But we know now that the world we're in and the life we're in is not perfect. There's still sin. There's still suffering. There's still Satan's attacks. We, we have to experience all these things still. But God still provides us with things now which give us hope. For example, he promised his Holy Spirit to be with us. And his Holy Spirit is a bit like, I suppose, that rope that you grab onto when you're in that dark cave. You're in that dark cave and the end, maybe the, the, the end is in sight. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. But um, until you get there, you hold on to that rope. You find security and strength, guidance, help clinging to that rope and you don't let it go. And God is providing you that, that hope. God is the God of hope, it says. And when you, you when you become a Christian, you begin to read God's word. You find out more about the character of God, the promises of God, the activity or the actions of God. And these three elements, I suppose, intertwined are like this strong rope. This all intertwined, bound together, gives you hope. Because, well, God's character, you find, is faithful, he's true, he's good. His promises, well, because of his character, we know he does not lie and he's promised uh, to be with us no matter what. And as you look at his activity in the Bible, you see his faithfulness. And actually, as you consider your own life and as we do church together, we experience the Christian life with others. We, we hear their testimony and hear of God's action and activity in their lives. And that gives us hope. So these three things, if you like, intertwined are like that strong rope. They give us hope. Hope that the Lord is, as the verse says, good to those who hope in him, those who seek him. Now, our salvation is the most important thing. But God has promises us for today. Uh, the Holy Spirit, we've already mentioned, but, but with that, God promises to always be with us. We can have hope because God has promised always to be with us. He promises to guide us as we trust in him. We've looked at that a lot in Proverbs. He promises to empower and equip us for ministry and enable us to face the difficulties that we're still going to face in this life. He's promised every spiritual blessing and he's promised us a, a, a worldwide family actually of people who believe in him who are considered now our brothers and our sisters. The word in Greek for hope gives us another dimension as well. It carries that sense of the Hebrew that is to expect and have confidence that something is going to happen, I believe it to happen, but it has the additional element of with joy, or even it could be just with enjoyment. 
So, so we can enjoy God. Our hope can be a joy-filled hope in God, even when life is far from enjoying, enjoyable. We can have joy. We can enjoy God. So we can have joyous hope. And because our hope is in God's faithfulness, reliability, his past proving that he is like this, then we can also have peace. Uh, like we were looking at last week, we can know peace because God is in control and God has a plan and he's promised to be with us no matter what. So yeah, biblical hope has joy and peace alongside it. And you may have noticed that Christmas, you know, Christmas cards have those three words, hope, joy, peace. They kind of go together. And again, another intertwined rope type thing, which is strong and sure and encourages us and empowers us and equips us and enables us and keeps us safe. Well, there's still more. In addition to peace and joy, biblical hope can, as we said already, give us strength, but also courage and boldness. Psalm 31, 24 says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. You know, we're not hoping that he's going to remove all suffering and struggles and sin from our lives. That's not realistic. That's not what the Bible promises. That's for the future. But in the present, he does promise uh, that we can know a courage and peace to face the day. We can do all things, it says in the Bible, through Christ who strengthens us. We can cope with all things. We can manage. All... Think nothing has to get us down or stop us proceeding because God is with us. And this year ahead, there may be more things that will get in our way or be a challenge which will cause us anxiety. There's uncertainty. There's unreliability about what's ahead. Uh, but we can still enter the new year with hope, living hope, hope that will encourage us and motivate us to keep going in the face of difficulty, but also keep going with the uh, mission, the ministry God's called us to. It says in God's word in 1 Timothy 4.10, for it is for this that we labour and strive. He's talking about ministry and mission and serving God and serving others because we have our fixed hope. In the living God. Our hope is fixed on God, not on the things of this world. You see how hope can change things? Hope can change things because you're not hoping for a better life here and now. You realise that more important than material things is time and people and getting the message out that there can be hope. Hope can be found. That Hope is a living hope. Hope has a name. It's Jesus. And our hope in the future, our hope in God, can motivate us to live for such things. It affects what we do with our time, with our talents, with our, our treasures, how we use our lives. We're no longer concerned so much about what we can get out of life and how things can be for us and our success, but we're more concerned than ever before with others' needs, with salvation for others, for serving God, for living for him. So this biblical living hope is is not an escapism from the reality of problems. In fact, it helps us just face those problems, face on, deal with disappointments, disappointments, and it motivates us to mission. And finally, just going back to thinking about our salvation and thinking about the future hope that we have. Hope is right with us until the very end time that we don't need it anymore, right up until our death. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve, as do the rest who have no hope. So the, the believer can have hope when, when a loved one dies. A believer can have hope even as they die. As the famous song, In Christ Alone, My Hope Is Found, says, you know, there's no fear in death. Such is the hope that we can have that it removes fear of death because our hope is certain and strong. And it's not in anything we've done. It's not in it, based on whether God's going to be in a good mood. It's based on what God has already done and provided in Jesus Christ. How 2,000 years ago, his grace appeared in the form of Jesus Christ, the, the baby who, who grew up to be the man who died on the cross for our sins, to give us eternal life to give us forgiveness of sin so that we can go and have eternal life with God forever to, to save us and to provide us with heaven.
Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. And this salvation that we're talking about, he tells us there, it's for everyone and anyone. Anyone who will, will like Lamentation says, seek the Lord and hope in him and trust in him, rely on him. The Bible says it's for all people, anyone and everyone who will do that, put their trust in him. They can have that salvation and with it hope. Do you have hope? Do you have salvation? Hope has a name. As we said, his name is Jesus. Do you know him? You can. You can. Through putting your trust in him, depending on his work on the cross, to deal with your sin and his resurrection to give you life. Maybe you're asking the question, but how, how do I actually do that? Well, prayer, it's simply through prayer. You can just simply pray, saying, God, I need, need hope. I need heaven. I need your forgiveness. Thank you for providing Jesus. I, I believe in him and I receive this gift of grace, undeserved love and favour that you have provided for all people. I put my trust in you. That's all you really need to say and pray. You can do that even now as we sing the next song. You can do that on your own after the service. You can contact us and ask us to, to do it with you. Uh, on the phone, obviously, because we can't meet in person. But if you need hope, if you're looking for hope, hope has a name. Jesus. Trust in him. Rely on him. And if you've already done that, keep trusting in him and relying on him to be that kind of secure rope that provides us with security, strength, salvation.